In today's video, we're gonna watch some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. We have an interesting video coming out of Long Island, New York. This was captured around June 17th, 2024. This witness found an unidentified creature that washed ashore. Now, the interesting part about this is it kind of looks like the Montauk monster that washed ashore back in 2008. Whatever this thing is, it's weird looking. It looks like it doesn't even have eyes, but it raises questions. Could this be another creature from Plum Island? If you don't know about Plum Island, it's an interesting read. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. What the fuck is that? Now that I got a better look of what that creature could possibly be, I'm not going to play any more of this video. If you want to see it, it's in the description down below. There's really nobody in the comments that are really taking a jab at what this could be. There's actually a lot of jokes going on. But my guess, that's just a poor dog that probably got lost in sea. Yes, it is believed to be a UFO. It was found by some construction workers in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It's real. I seen this story that happened back in 2020 in Colorado, and it was about this kid named Kevin. And at the time, he was 16 years old. He's kind of crazy, right? I'm gonna you because he gets his iPhone stolen from him, right? So he's tripping, bro. He's all mad that someone took his phone. So I guess he gets like three of his other homies, and they use Find My iPhone to figure out where his phone was at. They figure out where his phone's at. They said it's at like in this neighborhood or something. They immediately think we're just gonna burn down that house. They end up walking up to where it says that their house is at that has this phone in the middle of the night, bro. They set this house on fire. Bro. the whole house the whole house on fire bro and they end up killing like five people in total in the house bro like two kids three adults for a phone for a and phone wait, wait, wait. and mind he you he didn't three... even get the phone back i didn't even think it was the right house bro he yeah. damn near wasn't even the right house that they burned down yes bro oh my god three people end up breaking their bones trying to jump out the house and feel like that oh my and then five god. people ended up dying two of them were like babies bro like 22 months years old like another one was like damn near like one years old or something holy sh and they more than likely got the wrong house. Right, damn near got the wrong house. Yeah, they didn't even steal anything. The kids end up like running away. Five months later, they end up getting caught up. Five months later? Five months later, bro, they end up getting caught. Yeah, like I think it will happen this year, damn near. They sentenced them to like 60 years in jail. <sighs> At 20 years old. Oh my God, that's a stretch. Bruh. And he had no intention of doing that because they even caught him on camera. All him and his friends hooded up with masks on. These are the examples that adults see whenever yeah. it's like, do you see why <laughs> our kids need to stop being off the phone? This is the examples yeah, that they see. Yeah, like this. Yeah, oh, exactly, Oh, my bro. God, bro. All right, Peter, all them people, yeah, man. I swear to God. If that story is true, that's extremely sad and extremely horrible for them people to do that. Even if someone was to steal your phone to, to do something so drastic like that, just call the law if you think someone stole your phone in that house. There's no reason to burn down someone's house over your phone did you even attempt to get your phone back before the house burnt down it wasn't even the right house and if i'm not mistaken he said that there were some babies in there that were 22 month years old that was a little weird but i get trying to get back something that is yours that i 100 percent understand call the law if you think that that person had your phone if you used find my iphone get a hold of the law so that they can handle it how far would you go to achieve enlightenment we know the bacchus were sucking their own for eternal wisdom but would you mummify yourself while still alive? Soku Shinbutsu are a type of Buddhist mummy. In Japan, it refers to the practice of Buddhist monks pushing themselves to the point of death and entering mummification while alive. Now that's hardcore. The process for Soku Shinbutsu took about 3,000 days. It involved a strict diet called Mokujiki. The monk abstained from any cereals and relied on pine needles, resins, and seeds found in the mountains which would eliminate all fat in the body. The monks would slowly reduce, then stop liquid intake, thus dehydrating the body and shrinking all organs. Increasing rates of fasting and meditation would lead to starvation. The monks would die in a state of meditation known as jhana, while chanting a mantra about Buddha. Their body would become naturally preserved without the need of artificial preservation. The practitioners of Soku Shinbutsu did not view this practice as an act of unaliving themselves, but rather as a form of further enlightenment. Many of these Soku Shinbutsu mummies have been found in northern Japan and are estimated to be centuries old. Some texts suggest that hundreds of these cases are buried in and around the mounds of Japan. 
These mummies have been revered and venerated by followers of Buddhism. That's creepy, disturbing, and really amazing all at the same time. I mean, props to those guys for being so dedicated. If they don't want to consider it suicide or whatever YouTube doesn't want me to say, it's literally like taking the next step to enlightenment. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to take myself to a higher place and fast and basically mummify myself to enlighten myself. That's, that's kind of crazy to me. I really find that like truly dedicated to your beliefs. I mean, I would never do it. I, I like living too much, but kudos to whoever is brave enough and capable of doing it, I guess, because that takes some dedication and serious beliefs. What do you guys think about these monks? Do you think that this is a little weird or would you consider this respectable to their beliefs? The monolith is back. This time it was sighted in Las Vegas around June 15th, 2024. Specifically, hikers found this monolith on Gas Peak, which has a summit of over 7,000 feet, which makes it the tallest mountain peak in Las Vegas. And it left authorities questioning how it even got up there. And the interesting thing about this one, it's completely reflective. It looks like glass, but the questions still remain with these monoliths. Who puts them there? Where do they come from? Is it alien technology? Is it our technology? Take a look at these photos and tell me what you think. I think that that's so cool looking. I know a few years ago that they had some of these monoliths just show up randomly in random places. I'm almost 100% certain that it's an artist of some sort doing it. It's not alien technology or anything like that. But nonetheless, it's a really cool looking piece. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you for being subscribed and thank you for watching. I'm really sorry I didn't have a video out yesterday. I kind of hurt my hand. I, I'm not really going to show it on camera. I had to glue it together. It was leaking all kinds of fluids and everything. I even passed out. My wife wouldn't let me record a video after that happened, so I had to wait until today to record. So again, I'm sorry for that. But I'm very own black Bible. See, I did not know you could get a hold of the Vatican secrets if you were 75 and a scholar. Now I have something to look forward to when I get old. <laughs> There's a reason we think our siblings smell so bad. Oh, why? You ever pass by your sibling and then you like smell them like, yo, you stink. Yeah, yeah okay. Like, they just smell sour or something, Is right? it just because like, so check this out. It's actually a safety mechanism for survival. Whoa. Since we have siblings and we're related, yeah. there's a natural body response to make their sweat stink more to you because you're related. How? So it stops breeding. What? Yeah. Naturally, we won't want to, you know, mate with our sibling. Oh. It will stop you from doing that. So you can imagine in the wild or like early Neanderthals, yeah, yeah, if they yeah. smell them like, oh, they're like disgusted. It's because God put that in there so that you wouldn't mate with their sibling, bro. That's Loki dark too. But that's why even like your mom and dad, like when I come home from the gym, they're like, yo, you stink. Found this weird rock head while cleaning my garden today. How many people played the game high and seek when they was young? But did you know there's a hidden meaning behind this game? This childhood game was created in Greece by a person named Julius Polis back in the second century. But there's a backstory to this. If there was ever some type of emergency, all of the children will go behind. And the person that's looking for the children, he will say, come out, come out wherever you are. But it's a demonic twist to the story right here because the person looking for these children is really their parents. I know we all played this childhood game when we was younger, thinking it was innocent. But once you start to dig up the roots to all these games, you'll realize every childhood game we ever played was really demonic. This story is connected to every missing child on this planet right now, but it started back in ancient times. When they would play this game hide and seek, their children would go and hide, but no one would never see them again. They tried to give us little hints, warnings, and messages in this movie Monster Inc. Every time a child is in fear, they let out a great energy source that these monsters eat. 
We hear so many stories about the Vatican. We hear so many stories about these special islands that's dealing with the youth. It's all connected to this game right here. You go and hide, and guess what? No one will never see you again. Remember, they always hide the truth in our face. If you look at the word amber and you spell it backwards, do you know what you get? You get the word red ma, which means golden spirit and beautiful sight. But it's another twist to it. This is the city Ritma, which is deep in the ocean. Maybe that's why all those submarines are going down in the ocean. Maybe it's something down there in Ritma. Hey man, don't come for Monsters Incorporated. I love that movie. And they also didn't feed off of their screams. They were powered by their screams, and it turned out that laughter was a better source of power. Thank you very much. But all seriousness, it does seem like kids have a lot of games that resemble ritualistic acts. One that really comes to mind is like Ring Around the Rosie. That's a really creepy game to me for some reason. Always has been, even when I was a kid. What are some creepy kid games that you're aware of that kids play that kind of resemble like witchcraft or ritualistic in some kind of way? So let me know in the comments. The most convincing evidence of time travel. Yeah. There was a guy named Sergi. So he showed up randomly in Kiev. Yeah, yeah. And in 2006, mm -hmm. but he's actually from like the 1950s. Mm -hmm. So in 2006, when he said he spawned there, he was in all these like old clothes. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. 1950s clothes, not even 2006 clothes. Mm -hmm. And all he had was his old camera, right? Mm -hmm. So the police were like, "This is this is weird as fuck. You're telling me that you're a time traveler? I need to see pieces of ID." Yeah. He doesn't have ID. All he has, he says. Go look at my photos and my camera. They're undeveloped, right? Mm. So they develop his camera. All they see is like some girl, random girl and him back in Kiev in 1950 it looks like the 1950s yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're like wait a minute who is this girl sergi he's like yo this is my girlfriend but i haven't seen her in so long right? wait 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 so the guy's girlfriend or... yeah the guy's girlfriend so the guy he time traveled yeah and left the girl back in the 1950s supposedly mm -hmm. right so police they were like okay what's that girl's name we're gonna track her down oh so they go and look for her yeah they go and look for her they find her she's in her 70s oh shit Sergi is in his 20s. How did he not age? They asked the girlfriend, Yo, who is this to you? Oh, this is my boyfriend. But that was back in the 1950s. Damn. And then this is what happened. He, she said, Oh, yeah, he actually disappeared. But two years later, he came back to me. Mm. He had pictures. There's literally pictures on the internet of him in front of skyscrapers. Yeah, yeah. You know what Sergi said? This was pictures of him in 2050. Oh, 20. so he went in. So he went in the future, in the future. and he came back to her to tell. Oh, shit. So they're like, they're like, Okay, this is getting weird. We need to like lock him up in a hotel and actually interview him. They find out there was another guy named Sergi mm -hmm. from Kiev, same description, same everything. Mm -hmm. He actually went missing way, way, way Yo. back. So they're like, who is this? Yeah. So they locked him in a high rise hotel room, surveillance, everything, right? Mm. As soon as they're about to go in the room, they open the door, Sergi's not there no more. Damn. Disappears. Okay, so what happened to like everything else he had? They Police like have evidence. It's just the actual guy that says he was doing all this stuff gone that's a pretty interesting story i don't know if it's true or not i hope it is because it's really cool there just might be a guy out there named sergi just taking pictures with his old film camera i will have to say if anything like that ever happened to me where this guy claimed that he was a time traveler from the past and we set him up in a room that was highly surveillanced and there was no way we could have lost him and he just ended up disappearing that might have made me a believer that that guy was a time traveler because where did he go? How did he go? Let me know in the comments if any of you are familiar with the story, if you know any more about the story, because this was a really interesting one. The following footage was captured by an unidentified man whose daughter was playing down in her playroom, which is the basement. She had came running upstairs to let him know that she saw something or someone down there and it scared her. So of course he went to investigate because there shouldn't be anybody there. As he goes down into the basement, it truly gives you a creepy, spooky vibe. He doesn't realize it, but he captures a voice on audio. And then when he comes back upstairs, that thing made sure to let him know it was watching him. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think.
Oh my! <laughs> what are you doing there? Who are you? I got you good. Oh yes, you did. Oh, he got my heart good. First things first, you never have to worry about anyone sneaking in your house or going into that room without you not knowing because that door is the squeakiest door I think I've ever heard. That bothers me. That's the noise that just really like makes me grit my teeth really hard. But overall, this was a pretty good video. It had me on edge. There's a lot of creepy stuff going on in that room. The dolls everywhere are just really disturbing, especially that one on the horse. When it, when it gets into frame, it's like it really kind of creeps me out. And also, you can tell those children have fun down there. But overall, I'm pretty certain that this is a fake video as far as it being a paranormal type of video because it almost had me, but the ending when the ball moved, that kind of like gave it away as, yeah, that's probably just a fake video then. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. Did you see something in the video that I potentially missed? Was there a ghost in there? Did you hear something? Because... I didn't hear anything say anything, but it was still a really creepy video. The atmosphere was dense. Within the last 24 hours, we had three major events take place that can change this world. They just vandalized the Stone Edge, Putin just met with North Korea, and they found more monoliths all around the world. People believe Putin meeting with North Korea is no regular meeting. They are getting the world ready for the third world conflict. I believe it. The second major event that took place within 24 hours was the Stone Edge. People actually vandalize the Stonehenge. Do you know how important this really is? The Stonehenge is connected directly to the summer solstice, which is taking place tomorrow. Ancient people believe during this day, if you stand in between these stones, you can get pieces of energy from the sun. Not only that, they really believe that these doorways between these stones is a portal that can take you to a different planet. Stonehenge is so old, it goes back to prehistoric history. They really believe these stones are aligned perfectly with the sun. The third major event that took place that could change everything is these monoliths. They found more monoliths. This time they found it in Las Vegas, but it looked just like a mirror. Since the year 2020, they found about 87 different monoliths all around the world. No one know where it came from and people still don't know the purpose of it. I believe these scientists do know the real purpose of these monoliths. And I'm about to tell you exactly what it mean. It was a movie directed by the name of Stanley Kubik. He made a movie called 2001 Space Odyssey. And do you know what he put in these movies? He put a black monolith inside of his movies. And this monolith was created by alien life forms. They use this monolith as a form of technology so they could watch our growth. They know when we was created and they know when we was going to end. These aliens watch our reality or our dimension like it's a regular TV show. But they don't use TVs. They use these monoliths. They are recording all kind of information and data about all of us. But the scientists don't want to tell us this because people are going to be afraid. The elites know 2024 will be the first year we make physical contact with different life forms in this universe. So while these people are making meetings about the third world conflict, these aliens will actually come here and stop all the conflict in this world. Watch it happen. That's an interesting take about those monoliths. I actually didn't think about that being maybe alien devices to where they're monitoring us or they're watching us like a TV show. Maybe those monoliths beam out different regions or something. I kind of doubt it, but it's an interesting concept. And that's unfortunate with what they did with Stonehenge. I looked it up and it looks like they got the place cleaned back up and it's just ready to go again. So it doesn't look like any damage was done. It was in Las Vegas in 2021. Oh my nigga. God, Las and Vegas is crazy. I'm already knowing. So this lady, she was in the kitchen and she was cooking dinner while her husband was at work. So he was about to get off in like a couple hours. It was getting hot in the kitchen. So she opened the back window. There's this dude that was like, I think across the street. And that's the guy you was talking about. And he looks through the window and he sees her. Really? And he's just watching her for a little minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah then yeah. he goes to the front door and he starts knocking on the door. And he's going like this. He's like, are you there? 
Really? Yeah. Are you there? The whole time, she doesn't say anything. He tries to even go for the door. He tries to go for the handle. Oh, shit. But it's locked. He walks off, and while he's walking away, the husband jumps on the ring door doorbell camera. He's like, yo, who are you? What are you doing in front of my house? He comes back, and he says it's so casual. Uh, I was trying to get inside so I can see the girl that's inside so I can grape and kill her. You know, yeah, I'm just waiting for her, because if she opens the door, I'm going to go inside and cut her open and kill her. What the f uh, what I'm looking for is for the girl that's in the house to come out here because I'm going to have her and kill her. Can you have her open the door? Can you have her open the door? I can kill the girl that's on the other side of this door when she lets me in. What the? F I, I want to her and kill her because I have a knife and a gun. What the? F Bro, that's hella scary. Bro, when I said this spooked me for every woman in my life, on oh, Cassie, like, that's, that's the type of were like, that's some real movie. Sh when you're not home, Bro, lock all your doors. Like his voice is like haunting. Are you sure? Yeah, that's so scary. That's what you hear in your nightmares. Are you sure? And that dude just wandering on the streets. Yeah. And then no, pretty much they ended up. Um, they called the police. Police ended up getting him. I think like the next day. Oh, for they caught him. Yeah, they caught him. Yeah. Oh, and shit. They sent his ass to jail. Uh, man, let me tell you, people are scary. Please, even if you live in the country and nobody ever comes around, you don't even exist to the world. Lock your doors when you're home alone. Or just in general, because you never know who's going to approach your home and what they're, what's going on through their head. That actually was a really terrifying video. Whether it's real or fake, that truly is a scary video. Shit is getting know, weird. What I'm is telling. this? A green light shining into people's homes and backyards has neighbors, neighbors baffled and concerned. And tonight... Wink News is searching for answers. Yeah, Wink News reporter Summer Sunny went to Cape Coral for a closer look. A colorful nightlight. Oh, what the heck is going on? Or possibly something more. Casey Sutton was driving home from work Sunday night when she saw an airplane overhead. But it wasn't your typical flight pattern. I saw it going back and forth with a laser beam. It, was, it scanned over me multiple times. Philip and Lisa oh. Bartolio also saw the plane from their backyard in... Shit is getting know. weird. An airplane overhead, but it woke and Lisa Bartolio also saw the plane from their backyard in Southeast Cape. It was just like a pattern, like, a, like maybe a square or something. Yeah, like two lines of green all the way around the square. It was scanning the whole area, every square footage basically, covering Cape Coral. It's really weird. People who live here saw mysterious laser flights for three nights in a row, and they all asked the same question. What's going on here, you know? It's weird. Summer Wink News. Now, when you see shit like that and hear shit like that, you know it's some shit about to happen, y'all. That's just my personal opinion. That would be pretty uncomfortable seeing a plane going overhead and this green laser sweeping the ground. It makes me wonder if it's 3D mapping maybe for Google Earth. Let me know in the comments if you have any idea what that actually is. Or even if you don't know what it is, leave some comments letting me know the theories that you believe it is because. I think it's 3D mapping technology. I don't think it's anything harmful, but I could be wrong. Everyone wants to know how I made this swinging table for the chicken food. So I'm going to show you today how that works. But, uh, nope, 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 nope. The following video is crazy, and it's literally once in a lifetime. This girl was walking along the creek when she was filming a Snapchat for her friend talking about a movie when suddenly a bald eagle attacks her literally attacks her it almost makes me wonder about like the stories from our natives how they used to talk about the thunderbird and how the thunderbird used to carry off tribes people take a look at this footage and tell me what you think did you know the largest underground lake in america is in tennessee the lost sea adventure is located one hour from chattanooga and knoxville and you can ride a boat in a cave the tour begins with a three-fourths of a mile walk of the caverns full of history and cool points of interest but it can be steep in areas you'll eventually get to the boat docks where you can ride around in the lake and feed the trout that they stalk the lake is registered as a national landmark and one of the coolest cave tours we've ever done the tour lasts about an hour and 15 minutes and they do tours every day they're located in sweetwater tennessee read my caption for more info that's actually a pretty cool looking cave. I might have to go to Tennessee and check that out. Have any of you been there? Is this something that you would recommend? Looks like it could be a good family trip, especially if they're doing it every day.
following footage is from a man who was out hiking in the woods when he comes upon something really crazy interesting. These trees that look like they literally have facial expressions. Now, keep in mind, this possibly could have been carved years ago by somebody, or it could be a natural formation, but it almost makes you question the old folklore stories of trees that could talk, trees that had a, you know, a soul. Take a look at this and tell me what you think. For a couple of trees out there to have faces on them, I'm pretty certain that's intentionally done. But it's pretty cool looking. It actually kind of gives me some ideas. I kind of want to take some of my young trees and carve faces in them and all of them and just have woods just full of trees with faces. I think that would actually be pretty neat and something that people would probably run across in the future and question. I can't believe I'm saying this, but okay, we now have actual proof of aliens. Yeah. This guy is Ken Johnson. He worked for NASA, he's been an astronaut for a long time, he's been to space, seen a lot of different things. Recently he found something and was just completely kicked out of the company and told to not say a word, so yeah. So he says he has found actual proof of aliens and alien civilizations on the moon, but after refusing to destroy evidence was fired. He actually said this. Credits being a pilot with Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, like it's pretty nuts that he was often taking the photographs and documenting locations where people were, and said that there were elements in some of the photos that were completely unexplainable, and his boss asked him to destroy them. Hmm. Now, whether you believe in aliens or not, this is slightly strange, because it means there must be something going on up there, even if he is completely lying. But he said there are structures on the moon, he is 100% sure that they're remnant of ancient civilizations or something, so maybe ancient civilians did used to live on the moon. Now, I'm not saying there's people there now, but maybe once upon a time, there was. I'm sure more is going to come out about this, so hit that follow button, I'll keep you updated. Actually, this comment in the video pretty much sums it up really good. UFO fanatics don't know the difference between proof and someone claiming they have proof. Because girls my age, they want to be, you know, they're at the peak of their insecurity. Well, that's not true, but they're insecure uh -huh. and they want male attention and that doesn't go well for them. Mm. Like a lot of kids will talk to like grown men online because they think it's cool because they think like if they have the validation of a older guy, that means they're like, what do you mean an older know, guy? Like, like 17, like an adult, like a tw 20 year old. No, you know, girls. I know one girl who will talk to people online, lie about her age to them and she doesn't know who's behind the screen. Oh my gosh. And I'm very worried about her safety. What would you tell her right now? You need to realize that there's more to the world than what you're doing right now. And you're going down a dark path. And I think you have a lot of potential. Hmm. Okay. It's okay. dangerous what she's doing too. It's very dangerous. I don't know who that girl is. I do not know how old she is. She looks extremely young for her to be talking about things like that. And I will say one thing. When I was in school, young girls really did have a problem with their phones and they were talking to people that they were not supposed to be talking to at the age that they were talking to them. And it really worries me about kids going to school now or my kids going to school. You know, you got to monitor their phones. You don't want to be too over controlling, but you have to keep an eye on everything thing that they're doing because it's just a crazy dangerous world out there. The story it was about a man who donated his mother's body to an Arizona center for Alzheimer's research, okay? Cool. She suffered from Alzheimer's, she passed cool. away. Later on, he finds out and discovers it was sold to the US military. Oh boy. For six thousand dollars you know what it was used for you know what she was used for oh, no. you know what the military used his mother for even though she was supposed to be donated for alzheimer's research a test what? Dummy. she was blown up in a blast test <laughs> I mean, can you not sue? But the thing is, it happens all the time. And apparently that is the fine print, because it says science, right? Like donate my body to science. That's the fine print. And Bro. so they tried to sue and they, nothing happened. That's Dude, that, isn't horrible. That isn't that crazy? I looked more into it and it's no joke. There was an FBI case that go into it and there's documents that when they're doing these tests, bodies or parts donated and they sew things together like Frankenstein. What's the matter with you? I'm sorry. It's a real thing the <laughs> FBI knows about. This is a real 
real thing that happens in America. Man, that's crazy, and that would make me sad. It's one thing if you willingly donate to the military, but when you think you're donating to a research facility to help other people that suffer the same disease that the person that you're donating suffered, you would expect them to use it for the, the purposes that you donated the, the use for, right? One thing, though, I do wonder. The person that Frankenstein stitches the bodies together, I wonder how much they get paid because I bet that's a highly paid job. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.